So this is the old battery bay. This is where all of our equipment's gonna go. Charge controller, all the <laughs> battery disconnects, the fuses, all that stuff's gonna go in here because the batteries are now up here. They're up there. They're up, they're up here. And so I was trying to get it as close as I could to the battery bay. Mm -hmm. So, ooh, look, it's so perfect. Oh, I don't think I could have done that if I really planned for it. Yeah. Look at that, they're right here. You did plan for it. What is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> look, they're gonna drop, they drop straight down into the lower battery bay. They're like right on top, right here. Look at that. Look at how... <laughs> <laughs> how excited are you right now? Ah, oh, that's so great. That's gonna be perfect. Cause I'll have the batteries come down, I'll put, let's see, this is my positive. So I'll put a, actually I want them to swap. So I'll do that up top, I'll swap them. Cause I want my negative to come down to a bus bar, my positive to come down to a bus bar. And I want to put my battery disconnect right here. So it'll go uh, positive to battery disconnect, to the bus bar, to a fuse, to the inverter. That's, that's what I want to do. And it'll be on plywood on the back. Cool. So now we got a couple plywood. All right. Oh, that came out so perfect. All right, so are you drilling? Um, you can if you want. No, it's all right. You you can do the... Oh. oh. There might be blood from that one. Ow. That, there's a dent. There's no blood, I don't think. Baby, you're not allowed out here anymore. <laughs> or inside. Okay. You hurt yourself too much. Oh, man, that did hurt. letting me make cables. I'm learning. So should I make this one a little bit longer than I did the other one? Um, no, the other one was actually really good. Okay. You could, yeah, maybe a little, I don't know. It's, I mean, if it's a little longer, it'll get pushed out when you crimp it and it'll have some exposed copper, which isn't great. So like measuring from that neck right there? Yeah, we'll see how it's gonna compress it. Mm -hmm. So I would back it down just a hair. Like. That. Oh, I got them all on there for shot. Okay, you ready for this? Yeah. I'm gonna flip the switch. Ooh. There it goes. Just turned on. I heard it click. Now we should be on inverter power. Let's go see if the fridge is on. Oh. We're not connected to anything outside. Oof. I hear it running. Do you really? Oh, I hear it too. Oh my goodness, you did it! We don't have 12 volt power yet because I haven't hooked that up. That'll have to be tomorrow. But we are. You utter failure, you. But we are running off of our batteries through the inverter, and this is going. Another day. So, this is day four of doing electrical work. So far, pulled out all the old batteries, dismantled the old 12 volt system, installed the new batteries, installed the new inverter, pulled the old inverter out. Um, rewired the entire 120 volt electrical system and now i've got to rebuild the 12 volt system so that i can down convert 12 volt to 24 or 24 volt to 12 volt so that we can power all our lights and everything and i have this thing this is a uh, controller that all of the electrical systems will go into and on our display inside will show us everything that's happening with all the electrical systems so i'm going to go get this installed because i have it i have a couple other parts that are still on order that i need to get but uh i've got this so i'm going to install it
So this thing is a it's a product by Victron called the Servo GX. <clears throat> and the reason I got it is it shows you connect all your electrical devices. So I can connect, um, I've got an ethernet cable right here from the inverter that can plug in. It plugs in here to the bus. Actually, I'm gonna go to that one. And then we bought this display. This thing is gonna go in the hallway in the RV, but because Amazon shipping is so slow right now because of the pandemic, uh, I don't have my extension cables, so I'm just gonna temporarily plug it in right now and check to make sure everything's working. But it's got uh, HDMI and USB. USB is just for power. So it's got an, there's an HDMI plug right here and USB right there. So now that should all be connected and this will start powering on. So pages, if I swipe over, you can see my grid power I'm connected. This is my inverter. This is my AC load inside and these are the batteries. So you can see how many volts, how many amps it's currently feeding and where my power flow is. So right now it's not showing me how many amp hours are on the batteries because I don't have my device yet. I'm ha I have a device shipping that will, it's on back order. So that's another one that'll be here soon. So this is how many watts it's pulling from our grid power. So it shows what the status of the batteries are. Charging 77 watts, 2.7 amps. And what their voltage state is. Cool, it's all working. So I just need to tidy up these cables. I need to get another ethernet line to this because this thing right here, it's got an ethernet port. It has an ethernet port that I can plug into our RV's Wi-Fi network and then be able to see the status of this on my phone, wherever we are. And then if we're connected to the internet at an RV park or wherever, uh, I can view it from anywhere, see the status of if our RV is charging, if what the battery states are, how much draw we have if we forgot we left something on we can take a look and see if we actually left it on all that fun stuff and then this thing has a bunch of extra stuff like it's got some relays so if you wanted to hook it up to your generator start you can program it to, if your batteries get too low it'll automatically start your generator it has tank um and temperature sensors that you can plug in so you can do up to four tanks up to four temperature sensors stuff like that so it's got a lot of cool stuff that we aren't using at the moment but it's expandable. And then when we get our solar charge controller, that will go into it and we'll see how much power is coming in off the solar panels, into the batteries, into our loads, all that stuff. So it'll be really easy to manage our power. So I just realized I forgot to hook up the 12 volt system. I have these things, I have two of these. These are 24 to 12 volt step down boxes. So I need to wire these leads up to the battery and then output, so uh, get them, get them wired. think all of the electrical's done. Uh, since we upgraded to a 24 volt battery system, I had to down convert 24 volt to 12 volt and then hook that into our old 12 volt system. But now we have 120 volt power. All the outlets are energized. The residential fridge works all the time. If we unplug, it'll automatically switch over the batteries. And then we should have lighting now. Hey, we hey. have lighting now. So we have 12 volt lighting, all these should be working. Um, we have fans, I can hear the fans going. Thermostats for the AC units should be working. Water pump, water pump should work now. Everybody's gonna get dizzy. We have water. Yeah. 
All right, so the 12 volt system is working again. I figured out the problem with all of the outlets. I had a couple outlets that weren't working, these GFIs. Those are all fixed. Every outlet in here is working and energized, which is how we want it. So the electrical system, as far as batteries and all the plug-in areas completed. Next step is to get order solar panels, solar panels to the solar controller, solar charger, to the batteries. But that is another project. We're trying to do it in phases so that it's not too overwhelming. <laughs> so all the batteries are upgraded. We could probably live in this thing for a week and a half without any power input and we could survive on just battery power, even with a residential fridge. So that's cool. Now when we add solar panels, it'll be unlimited. On to the next project.